Hola, soy yo Vicky otra vez y en el video de hoy vamos a mirar cómo decimos en español one o ones, que en inglés usamos uh, one or ones, for example, the blue one, the old one, the new ones, the red one, etc. So in English we use one or ones to talk about these um, uh, pronouns, I suppose they are. Yeah, qualitative pronouns. Oh, good. Actually, I forgot what their, their grammatical name is. Don't be frightened of the grammatical name. Uh, you will find this uh, exercise on the new, the new revised Break the Language Barrier Level 4, which I believe. I have a copy of here and it has some extra things in it. So you have the old um, level four, it won't have these in it, but uh, in the new level four Break the Language Barrier, which has a lot more exercises and a lot more information, it's been completely updated for 2020, this lovely year that we're going through. Uh, and it's page 56 and these that we're doing are qualitative pro pronouns that's their technical name as i say don't worry about that all it means is one or ones in english in spanish what we do again don't be frightened by this explanation because i'm going to explain what it is in normal uh, sort of everyday language but we take the appropriate definite article and then the adjective. So what's a definite article? Well, that again, sounds complicated, but all a definite article is, is the. So uh, the house, the car, the person, the table, the man, the woman, etc. Now, of course, in Spanish, we have masculine and feminine of nouns. So the the depends on who we're talking about. So the girl is la chica. The boy is el chico. So to make one, how we say one in English, what we do is we take the appropriate article. So for example, if we're talking about a car. So a car is masculine. So it's el coche. So if we want to say, oh, the red one, referring to the car, we will say el rojo. Yeah, I like the red one. Me gusta el rojo. Whereas if it was something feminine, for example, uh, if you were talking about uh, a house and you said, I like the small one, referring to the house, house is feminine, so it'd be me gusta la pequeña, yeah? So instead of saying I like the small house, if you're saying I like the small one, me gusta la pequeña. So basically you take the, the form of the that's appropriate to whatever it is you're talking about, because of course we've got plural as well, because we've got los and las. So if you were saying, I like the red ones, uh, maybe you're talking about sweets. I like the red ones. And the sweets are los caramelos. So that's masculine. So you'd say, me gustan. Of course, that's plural too. Me gustan los rojos. And if you were saying, I like the red ones about something feminine, uh, I'm trying to think, so they say the skirts, I like the red ones. Me gustan las rocas, because skirt is feminine, la falda. Okay, does that make sense? Anything you don't understand, please don't forget to ask me in comments or send me a message. Uh, you might have the... Uh, be wanting to ask the exact same question that somebody else is wanting to ask. Sometimes people don't like to ask questions because they think, oh, that'll be a stupid question. But normally they're not stupid questions. Uh, if it's anything that you don't understand, you can be 100% certain that there'll be a lot of other people who haven't understood it too. So, yeah, so basically, let's look at some examples and that will make it... Examples always make it clearer. Uh, oh, I lost my examples then. 
So we're in Break the Language Barrier and we're on page 56. And I'm going to read out the examples in English first and then in Spanish, okay? So the first one, he always bought new cars, but I always buy used ones. So he always bought, if he always bought them, that's past tense, but it's also imperfect, because if he always did it, it's on a regular basis. So, él siempre compraba coches nuevos. He always bought new cars, see? But I always buy, that's present tense, pero yo siempre compro, now, used ones. So these are cars, so they're masculine. So you'd say, los usados. So él siempre compraba coches nuevos, pero yo siempre compro los usados. Okay? Number two, she prefers short men, but I prefer tall men. So, ella prefiere los hombres altos, uh, uh, bajos, <laughs> she prefers the short ones. Ella prefiere los hombres bajos, pero yo prefiere, uh, prefiero los altos. The tall ones. So in Spanish, really, you're just saying the talls. There is no equivalent of ones like the tall ones. You're just saying the talls. Okay, they wanted uh, the easy question, but we wanted the difficult one. Okay, so they wanted, again, imperfect. Querían, or ellos querían, uh, la pregunta difícil. Pero nosotros queríamos... I've said it the wrong way around again, haven't I? Ellos querían la pregunta fácil. They wanted the easy question. Pero nosotros queríamos uh, la difícil. La difícil. We wanted the difficult one. So it's la difícil because it pregunta is feminine. Okay, she will think uh, she will think the blonde man is handsome, but I will prefer the dark one. There's a theme of men through this. I don't know why. Ah. Okay, pensera, pensara, or creera, because this is to think in the future tense. El hombre rubio es guapo. Pero yo prefería, uh, prefer, uh, preferiré el moreno. Yeah? So, ella pensará que el hombre rubio es guapo, pero yo preferiré el moreno. So, the Spanish sentences I'll be putting in the description so you can, uh, sorry, the English sentences I'll be putting in the description so you can translate them at home in your own time and then check them again if you like. Okay, numero cinco. The red house would be his and the white one would be hers. Uh, so, la casa roja sería suya, his, pero la blanca será Suya. So suya, uh, referring to the house, is feminine because the house is feminine. So it doesn't matter if it's his, yeah, or hers, it's still feminine because its house is feminine. So ella será, uh, sorry, no, uh, la, ca la casa roca será la suya or just suya. Y la blanca será suya. So we have no way of uh, knowing there whether it's his or hers. We only know from the context of the sentence because the fact that it's suya refers to the house being feminine. Okay, every man wants a luxury car, 
but they always buy the economic ones. So, number six, cada, oh, oh, sorry, number uh, six, cada hombre quiere uh, un coche de lujo, pero siempre compran los economicos. Los economicos, because car is masculine and cars is plural. So, los economicos. Okay, numero siete. I always bought a grey carpet because the white ones always get dirty. So, I always, so it's imperfect. Siempre compraba un, um, una moqueta gris uh, porque... Las blancas, the white ones, moqueta, which is carpet, is feminine, porque las uh, blancas siempre se ensuciaban. Uh, no, I always got dirty. Yeah, it is past tense, it is imperfect. So yo siempre compraba uh, las moquetas grises o una moqueta gris. Porque las blancas se ensuciaban. Ok, vale. Número 8. Both the dresses were, oh, sorry, are pretty, but you will like the short one more. Ok, so los dos vestidos. Remember that vestidos, although it's dress, is actually masculine. So los dos vestidos son bonitos. Pero te gustará, but you will like, uh, um, what's it, the other one? Ah, pero te gustaría el corto más. So the short one, again, dress, masculine, singular. El corto más. So, um, Los dos vestidos son bonitos, pero te gustará um, el corto más. Ok, número nueve. He has put the big lamps in the living room and the small ones in the bedroom. So, él ha puesto, he has put, él ha puesto las lámparas grandes, the big lamps, en el salón y las pequeñas, the small ones, because lamps are feminine and it's plural, las pequeñas en el dormitorio. So, él ha puesto las lámparas grandes en la sala o el salón y las pequeñas en el dormitorio. Y número 10. Um, the big... Oh, sorry, I can't, you know, my eyesight. The big glass. Ah, the big glass. <laughs> I put on my southern accent. Uh, the big glass is for me. Oh, it's for the red wine. <laughs> and the small one is for the white. <laughs> So, la copa grande. Now, the reason I'm using copa, because you probably think why I'm using vaso, which also means glass, uh, but for a glass of wine, it's a copa. So, la copa grande es para el vino tinto y la pequeña es para el blanco. Okay, vale. Okay, hope you've understood that okay. Uh, I must get some more light in here because I was struggling there to read some of the uh, um, writing. There's a reason for that. I have a problem with one of my eyes, but I'm getting it sorted quite soon. Um, anyway, so less about me. Hope you enjoyed the video, found it useful. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, if you don't mind. Uh, and yes, remember you can now buy the updated Break the Language Barrier Level 4 book on any Amazon sites, around about 15 euros. They seem to vary from, you know, I put the price in at 15 euros and then Amazon seems to more or less 
uh, put whatever price they feel like. So it might be a little bit less, it might be a little bit more. It's normally a little bit less rather than a little bit more. Okay, so os veo en el próximo video. Muchas gracias. Adiós.